up boys and girls. Today's lesson is focused on our eighth yoga principle, have alone time. Alone time is so important, especially right now in this time where we're staying at home and we're with our family a lot. It's important for us all to have our own alone time. It helps us to really recharge our batteries. So the way we practice this yoga principle is by enjoying peaceful moments alone. So an example of this is you could find a cozy corner in your bedroom and maybe bring something that helps you feel calm and peaceful. You could listen to some calming music. Um, some examples, you could bring a journal to write in. You could bring something that helps you with a breathing tool like a pinwheel or maybe your favorite stuffed animal. Anything that really just helps you feel peaceful and calm. When you do this though, you want to avoid having something like technology. So we don't want to be looking at our iPad or computer or TV or phone. We want to just have peaceful alone time and give our eyes and our brains a break from those screens. So you might just sit maybe in easy pose and just focus on your breathing. That's a great way to practice peaceful alone time. Something else you might do is just uh, find something you want to focus your attention on. Let's try it. I have something. I need to make it dark in here first. Find something you want to focus your attention on. So we're going to use my, my essential oil diffuser that turns different, changes colors. So you can find something maybe that that lights up or changes colors or something like this and you just want to make sure that you are trying to focus all of your attention on it. So letting go of any thoughts, letting go of any worries, uh, trying to not think about things around you, just focus all your attention on the one thing, training our brain to be able to focus and this helps our brain calm down. So see right now if you can notice the changing color. Focusing, so keeping your attention on one thing which our brain loves. It really helps us be able to build our focus skills and helps us calm down. Keep focusing, you're doing great. set that down and as I make it a little brighter in here I just want you to think about how you feel after doing that maybe you don't feel any different and that's okay so those are some examples of things you can do to have your alone time the next thing we're going to do is try a magic massage. So this is just giving ourselves some extra care because that's what this yoga principle is all about. So for this magic massage, I want you to, you can either sit, you can stand if you have more energy right now, or you can lay down if you're a little more tired and you wanna relax, whatever feels good for you. I'm gonna stay seated in easy pose. And we're gonna take three balloon breath. So balloon breathing is where you want to imagine your belly filling up like a balloon. So we're not breathing in our chest. We're really focusing on our belly going out as we breathe in, our belly coming in as we breathe out. You can keep your hands there. If you want to add arm movements, you can breathe in, making your arms go up over your head. And then as we breathe out, we bring our hands down. So pick whatever feels good for you. Okay. All right. Ready? Sitting up nice and tall. If you're sitting or standing, and then breathe in, fill your belly up with air. Breathe out, let it all out. Two more, inhale. Exhale out. One more, in through your nose. Open your mouth, let it out with a sigh. Nice. Now for this magic massage, you're gonna take your fingertips you're going to be moving them in small circles on different parts of your body. So let's start with our heads, fingertips to your head, and just start moving in small circular motions.
motions firm on your skull. Feel your head really press in. Just giving yourself a nice massage. It shouldn't hurt. Don't press too hard. Just go in small circular motions, massaging your head. And now bring your fingertips to your temples, the sides of your face, right by your eyes, and roll them in small circles. Pressing in, firm but gentle. Small circle. Nice. Now move your fingers to the back of your neck and draw small circles with your fingertips in the back of your neck. Should feel really good. Massage all those tight spots. When you boys and girls are on your computers and laptops, that's when our neck and our shoulders start to get tight spots in them. We need to massage them out. Bring your hands now across your body like you're giving yourself a hug and really squeeze your arms, squeeze your shoulders. We're gonna squeeze all the way down, right? All the way down our arms. Squeeze, 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 all the way down to your wrists. Squeeze your hands. Nice. And then we want to massage our hands. So take maybe your thumb and roll it in circles around your palm of your hand. And then let's squeeze each finger as we go down each finger. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Keep going. And then massage any other part of your body that feels tight and tense. So you could bring your feet out and give your feet a little massage. Or I didn't really massage my shoulders enough. I'm going to go back to my shoulders and go in small circles around my shoulders. Feels so good. Again, we're just practicing being kind to ourselves, relaxing our muscles. And this actually helps us refresh our minds, our brains. It helps get our blood flowing in our body and that actually helps improve our focus. How cool is that? All right, let your hands come down. Take a big breath in, let it out. Great, so next we're going to read a story called Moody Cow Meditates. I'm gonna come up to you. After we listen to this story, we're gonna do some yoga poses that go right along with it, okay? And this book is great for all ages. This one really teaches us, um, at the end of the story, we'll see a kind of a, a way, a practice that you can use, especially when you're in a bad mood, when you're angry, when you're upset. So a way that you can practice having that helpful alone time to help you feel more peaceful. This is by Carrie Lee McLean. All right. My name is Moody Cow. It used to be Peter, but now it's Moody Cow. It all started one rotten day when everything went wrong. First, I had a bad dream. A very bad dream, which involved a giant three-eyed alien. What a rotten way to wake up. Mom? I wanted to find my mom and tell her about the giant three-eyed alien, but I couldn't find her anywhere. So I admit, I was in a bad mood to begin with. Then I couldn't find my skateboard. Turned out my sister had borrowed it. Daisy, stop drawing on my skateboard. Okay, maybe I overreacted when I pulled her tail, but it was a brand new skateboard. So then Daisy had to get me back by tripping me on the stairs. What a monster. That made me mad. So mad that I cut off her doll's hair on purpose. Of course I got in trouble for that, which made me miss the bus. I had to ride my bike all the way to school in the snow. That made me really mad. On the way home from school, I hit a snowbank and scraped my knee. There was blood everywhere. And the rest of the way, I couldn't stop thinking about how rotten my rotten day was really all Daisy's fault. She put me in a bad mood by drawing on my new skateboard. Ow, ow, ow. Or 
Or maybe it was the giant three-eyed alien's fault for giving me bad dreams. Whatever. I was so mad I couldn't see straight. And when I turned into our driveway, I crashed right into my dad's truck. Well, you can understand that with a bloody knee and a banged up nose, I was madder than ever. He's saying, ow, I think I broke my nose. Super mad. And then I did something crazy. I picked up my baseball and threw it right through the window on purpose. He's saying, ah, I can't take it anymore. Unfortunately, my mom saw the whole thing. What on earth do you think you're doing? She yelled. Have you lost your mind? She came outside and took one look at my super mad rotten day face. And I guess she felt sorry for me. Aw, are you a little moody cow? Of course, my sister Daisy heard her say that. She started shouting, moody cow, moody cow, Peter is a moody cow. The next thing I knew, all the kids in the neighborhood joined in. We need grandfather, mom said. And she picked up the phone. Pretty soon, my grandfather was sitting in the sunroom on a meditation cushion. I got to sit on one too. I hear they're calling you Moody Cow, grandfather said and smiled. I couldn't help but smiling back a little. I guess Moody Cow was kind of a funny name. See this, he asked as he pointed to a jar of water. This is your mind, he said. And these, he held out a little dish of sparkles. These are your angry thoughts. That, I said, is a jar of water. And those are Derry's fazy dust sparkles. Fairy dust sparkles. Come on, Mr. Moody Cow, work with me here. Now, what we're going to do is to put in a little pinch of sparkles for every angry thought you have. And then we're going to sit here until they settle down to the bottom. By the time the water is clear again, your anger will have settled down too. It won't work, I told him. Let's just see, he said. I took a pinch of sparkles and dropped it into the water. Which angry thought is that? Grandfather asked. That's the three-eyed alien. It tried to gobble me up last night. Oh, I see. Rotten way to start the day. Okay, what else? I put in another pinch for the next angry thought. This is me having to clean the toilet for a whole month for breaking the window. I hate cleaning the toilet. Me too. What else? I put in one more pinch of sparkles and said, This is Daisy drawing on my brand new skateboard with a marker. Oh dear, she did that? Grandfather sighed. Okay, what else? This pinch is when I missed the bus and I had to ride my bike to school in the snow. You can ride a bike through snow? Grandfather asked. I have good tires. Anything else? Okay, on my way home, I scraped my knee and I was so mad and I crashed into dad's truck. I think I broke my nose. Ouch, Grandfather said. That must have hurt. It did. And then I picked up my baseball and I threw it through the window on purpose. Wow, you should put in a double pinch for that one. I guess you really did have a moody cow day. I sure did. Is that all? Grandfather asked. Yeah, but it's a lot. It sure is. Grandfather put the lid on the jar and shook it up real good. This jar is like your mind right now, he said. Angry thoughts bouncing around all over the place. Now, let's see what happens when we let your angry thoughts settle down, Grandfather said, putting the mind jar down in front of me. Just sit quietly and see what happens. I sat up real straight, and then I got to ring the bell. Bong!
I sat watching all of my angry thoughts swirl around like crazy in the jar. A few thoughts slowed down and sank to the bottom. And then a few more and a few more. It was so still, I could feel my heart beating. It was so quiet, I could hear my breath going in and out, in and out. I felt a ray of golden sunshine coming through the window. It warmed my back and started to melt away the last bit of my anger. Finally, Grandfather rang the gong to end the practice. He leaned over and whispered in my ear, okay, this part's important. Don't move until you can't hear the sound of the bell anymore. And I cocked my head, listening closely. Bong. The ringing got softer and softer and softer until I couldn't hear it at all. Grandfather smiled and held up the jar. Well, look at this. All the sparkles have settled down, he said. And my angry thoughts have too, I said. I mean, I guess if I think about it, I could get mad again. That's probably true, he said, but we have worked pretty hard to settle them down. Let's not stir them all up again. I laughed for the first time that day. That thing is cool, I said. Can I keep it? Sure, said Grandfather. He smiled and handed me the jar and the dish of sparkles. A few minutes each day keeps the moody cow away. I laughed again. Thanks, thanks, Grandfather. Can we do this again tomorrow? Of course. Let's try to do this together every day. I went to my room and put the mine jar by my bed, just in case the three-eyed alien ever comes back. Now it's been two whole weeks, and I haven't had one moody cow day. But I've decided to keep the name. I kind of like it. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that story. Let's try the same practice that Grandfather Cow did for Moody Cow. So we have our bell and we have our mind jar. So remember in the story, they first rang the bell to start the practice, then they shook up the jar, imagining that the glitter inside was like the thoughts and the feelings that the cow was having, and we watched those thoughts and feelings settle down to the bottom of the jar. Remember, they don't disappear, they don't necessarily go away, but we want to recognize our thoughts and our feelings, but then let them settle down. We don't need them to take control of us. We can let them settle down. So we don't do things like Moody Cow did in the story that got him in trouble or that he was mean to his sister or he hurt himself, right? We wanna be able to calm ourselves down before that happens. So let's practice it together. So sit up nice and tall, straight spine, still body. Take a deep breath in through your nose out through your nose, listen to the bell, try to focus your ears completely on the bell. Watch the glitter as it settles. Keep your focus on that glitter. Nice focus. I'm going to ring the bell to end our practice. Try to listen to the sound until it totally fades away. 